no, no, it was just, um, it was really just something to do. I was kind of very eager to, I, I, I was, uh, I mean, waking up on my 18th birthday, disappointed that I wasn't Johnny Rotten yet. And uh, then it took me another sort of 12 years to, I mean, I had red hair, so I was ready to go. Um, orange hair. And uh, I'd always kind of wanted to do something like that. I never quite knew what it was going to be, and I tried lots of different things and fell into uh, Paris. Towards the end of it, I remember showing up at a few events and um, nobody else did, and so the cameras sort of turned on me, and it was kind of that, it was just the beginning of possibly Paris becoming a celebrity, and that yeah. was kind of when it finished. And I didn't really like the idea of that, and also P PRs coming over with starlet saying go on take the piss out of her sort of thing which kind of wasn't really me. I, I definitely pissed off a few potential employers, yeah. So, no, I left my balls in Hollywood. I think it was running into that Lambost in Cannes. It was, everyone, there was a big press conference going on on the Quasette and Loads of people milling around, and I just sort of ran full steam into a lamppost, which was kind of my party trick and had been since I was 16. He said, I had a ring on, and it makes it sound like it's a really horrific collision. And then the press conference, and all the people on the beach sort of started moving away from the cameras and started you know, coming over and seeing if I was alright. So I sort of managed to get, get, get the attention I was looking for. Uh, Jack Daniels and speak. Well, I was working. You don't want to know what I was doing when I wasn't working. I don't like, I don't know an awful lot about it. I do love Princess Mononoke, it's a fantastic film, but I don't, I, I, I haven't really seen much more than that. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Curveball! <laughs> and he, there was no script or anything, he just sort of knocked on my door on the trailer and there he was in his sort of um, jumbo cords and brogues. Uh, uh, hi, Paul. C could you patter for me today? W would you patter for me? I said, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll yeah, patter for me. <laughs> Fucking hell, what are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, um, Improvise is what he meant. And it was um, one of those days, you know, you, it, sometimes it can be a bit crap and sometimes it flows out and thankfully it flowed out and it was just amazing experience. Badly. <laughs> well, I well, because I was having a blazing row with my um, producer because we, we'd been out in New York for about three weeks and have managed to accumulate about 30 seconds of material because I, I haven't got a very strong work ethic, especially when you fly that in New York. Yeah. Um, and there we suddenly, it was New York Fashion Week, and then suddenly Woody Allen's walking down the street, so I'm having this blazing way, I say, I'm not going near him, I'm not doing it, I've waited 30 years to meet him, I'm not going to piss him off. And I produced the music, and he will do it. And in the end I said it very quietly into my phone, I don't even heard it. Oh, Something about like changing his work schedule around his school holidays because he just started going out with his daughter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd forgive him anything, though. <laughs> yeah, but he did it in uh, an hour and a half, and we did ours in sort of 23 minutes. No, no, see, we were much more creative with the language, you know. All those phrases like vulgar contox, which I think is way beyond anything Gordon could come up with. Wouldn't have a clue. Basic swearer. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's great. I mean, pulling stands out really from, from most of the things I've been doing the last few years because it felt so good and it was, uh, the writing is just on another level, I think. I was always a shocking puller. <laughs> I just had to get pulled, that was the only thing. I'd have to leave it up to other people. He did, yes. <laughs> Wrong <ones. laughs> Disturb ginger women. Oh, shit. <laughs> Winged it. It was okay. I, did, I wasn't really aware of it. I've been breaking bones ever since. Apparently, it's quite frequent in, or common in uh, the twins. They sort of, you know, have a bit of a rut to see what's come out first. I cried at, at, at uh, 1989 when Nicky told us. That was a real moment. They, they send out this pack, the Arsenal for, for um, season ticket holders, 
And in there was, uh, this is a couple of years back, um, a bottle opener. Just a sort of innocuous looking red bottle opener, really sweet and nasty. And it had been lying around, and presumably my wife put it into the cutlery drawer at the back. And for a period like this season, building up, where every time the drawer opened, there was this commentary from 1989, um, Brian Moore saying, Thomas, it's up for grabs now, Thomas! I thought I was fucking going mad, coming out of the cutlery drawer. And it was this bottle opener that had this, you know, when you open a bottle, no, I never actually opened a bottle with it. The commentary comes out, there's a little speaker on it, so, yeah. Well, I sort of got myself sectioned first, you know, I just thought the fucking cutlery's talking to me, right? What's your fascination with Japanese animation, I think? <laughs> I never was, really. <laughs>